have two to three financial management and economic problem that I will be discussing right over here. I will put forth two or three questions in front of you. First, the thing is that we have the product life cycle where we can see product after it is being launched it reaches a maturity it reaches the highest point of sale which is obviously known as the zenith and then starts declining so we have this the sales line of the product the product reaches the zenith and then gradually declines this happens with every product consequently we can see that along with the sales line the company starts generating profit derived from the sales but not from when the product was actually introduced profit generally generates after a few units of sale profit increases and declines too just like the sales line of the product sales line this is the profit of the profit line profit also reaches the zenith and falls down just like that of the product sales line my question is question number 1 is why does profit start declining before the declination of the product sale i repeat why does the profit line starts to decline the profit obviously reaches the zenith before product sale reaches the zenith consequently pro profit line also falls down before the product sale falls down my question is why does profit reaches the zenith before the product sales line going further to my next question we have that this difference we call it x the next question my question 2 is what is this difference known as now going to the third question we have this difference and this zero this zero is derived from the bep or the break even point analysis which i am going to discuss right now the break even analysis is derived from the word break even where the company faces a no profit no loss situation the company must continue to manufacture the product if there is a profit and may even shut it down if there is a loss so we have the break even point analysis derived from a formula which is contribution equivalent to sales minus variable cost or we can call it bp and this is formula number a and we have the total cost which comprises of total cost comprises of total variable cost and total fixed cost we have a situation we have a situation contribution is equal to sales minus bp at the break even point where the company neither generates any profit where profit is equal to zero and loss is also zero okay it's a break even thing at the break even point at bp we have contribution 
function uh, is equal to sales minus GP is equal to fixed cost. Since profit is a null factor, profit is a null factor, or it is zero. It's only a DV. This is possible. Contribution is equal to sales minus VP, which is equal to fixed plus plus profit. Fixed cost plus profit. But profit should be null if it is at the break even point. We will be drawing the break even point analysis and I will be explaining it to you. By considering the break even point analysis, we have the fixed cost line, we call it the total fixed cost. Then we will have the total variable cost. Total variable cost is generally a 45 degree line because with the production of every single unit, suppose the variable cost for one unit is rupees 1. So the variable cost for 10 units will be 1 into 10. Variable unit, uh, variable cost for 15 units will be 15. So, it consequently there is a variable cost to units of production. There is a correlation, then the correlation is perfect. Since the correlation is perfect, there will be a 45 degree incidence. This is the total variable cost. Now, we have the fixed cost line. The fixed cost line starts from over here because the fixed cost line, uh, the uh, fixed cost line starts from over here. Now we have the total cost line. The total cost line starts from over here because it has already covered the fixed cost area. Total cost line, I, I repeat, the total cost line generates from over here since it already encapsulates the total fixed cost. Total fixed cost and total variable cost is a subset. Total fixed cost, total variable cost, both these are a subsets of the total cost. Total cost subsets, uh, total cost supersets, total fixed cost and total variable cost. So we can see that total fixed, uh, total cost starts from over here, already encapsulating both. And this difference is maintained. If you call it X, or we have already called X, if you call this Y, this will also be Y. It is equidistant. From this point, this is Y. This will also maintain the same distance. This is, these are equidistant lines. We have the sales, this is the sales line. Now, sales, this is the sales line. Sales line starts from, originates from the origin and moves upright. Till this point, Sales was undercast by the total cost. But from this point onward, sales has overtaken the total cost line. So we can say that the company is generating profit from this point onwards. And this angle is known as theta, or theta is equivalent to angle of incidence. What incidence? It is the break-even point. Okay. Consequently, it is very much understandable that since this is profit, this portion would be loss. This is the break-even point. We have the sales, total cost, total fixed cost, 
total variable cost. Now my question is, this is the next question, I guess the question number three. I'm not keeping track of the question. This is question number three, I guess. This question is to the economists, is that a company starts generating super profit. The question is how to include super profit within this graph. I repeat, how to include or how to represent super profit within this graph. Thank you.